that's not good. All right, are we, are we rolling? All righty. Guys, this is the very first Under Shelter Sessions. Is that, is that not? I'm waving it, okay. Welcome all, this is the very first Under Shelter Sessions interview. We've just had our very first performance. We've had the man, the myth, the legend, Jimmy Harwood come on. He's blown our minds completely. Let's welcome Jimmy Harwood into the beanbags, onto the beanbag. Yeah. Woo! There he is. How are you, bro? I'm good, bro. It's, it's actually so good to have you uh, here finally. No, thanks for having me, man. We've been talking about it. I know, we've been talking about this for a, uh, for a long time. If, if I'll give you a little bit of backstory to the people out there. We started talking about this back in, in March or something and we had everything kind of planned out, ready to go and uh, and then the coronavirus hit and it stuffed everything up and we weren't able to get it done and we've been trying to keep getting it done. I think there was another time a few months ago we tried to do it again and then we couldn't get it through. So it's a pleasure to have you on, man. No, cheers for having me. You, you killed it out there. That was really a solid effort. Cheers, man. Um, I think one thing that a lot of people are keen to hear about, uh, especially as, as musicians, is uh is just how you how you kept motivation during during the lockdown just because even from from personally what I've seen um, just online is that a lot of bands are kind of falling off a little bit and and not staying at it. Tell us a little bit about um, how you've gone through this whole period because I see you've been you've been working you've been grinding. I've been seeing that. So tell us a little bit how how you've been going through that period. I've actually been more motivated I reckon than I normally have, mm. bro. Because like I started um, producing my own stuff at the start of the year. Yeah. Um, and I'd al- always wanted to do that and I finally got a MacBook and stuff and um, so I have the, had the tools to do it and then lockdown hit and like had nothing to do but make tunes you know so obviously you can't play gigs because like and that was like half my life was playing gigs but um, it's been good just to learn my production skills and yeah I'm lucky I got the MacBook at the start of the year because I don't know what I would have done. What kind of MacBook did you get? I have a MacBook Pro, bro. MacBook Pro. Yeah, it's 2017, good. man. It's a good, it's a good machine. It's a good little machine. Does does the job. Does but the I think job. Just seeing how some people have looked at it as like an opportunity to to build new skills and really grow as like an artist has been really cool. Whereas some people have just like fully dropped off, stop work, stopped uh, stop work and stop grinding. Yeah, um, well, I guess like bands, it'd be hard like with bands it's just right together because you know. Mm. You have to catch up in in a garage or whatever to jam, and if, with Corona, you couldn't really do that. So, yeah, I'm sort of lucky. I'm a solo musician, to be honest. But yeah. So you said that you have a band that kind of travels with you. Do you is that do that they come around? They you jamming yet, or are they are you more of a? Solo? Um, we're about to. We're we're literally about to. We're gonna like revamp the set, um, go through Ableton because all the stuff I've been producing is like almost got electronic parts in it. So mm. we want to get the you know effects and the electronic parts in it. Um. So we're going to go through Ableton. We're going to, yeah, revamp the whole set. But, um, yeah, we're about to. Just, yeah, just cool. about to. The, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about was, uh, obviously, with, with Melbourne reopening back up and kind of the, the hospitality industry has been uh, in a bit of a slump, obviously. Tell us, what are some of your... What, is, what are one of your best moments from one of the Melbourne bars? Because you, you play a lot. You've been to a few different ones. Do you have any standout stories of, uh, of anything interesting that's happened? Uh, like best or like you know, there's some weird moments that there's give me, some, all, give all me a sort, weird moment bro, uh, one of the first gigs I ever played was in Ballarat <laughs> supporting <laughs> <laughs> supporting Twisted Willows and there was like the f- crowd was literally like the owner my dad and like Twisted Willows manager and like it was just there was like five people in the room and I was playing halfway through my set and I was like so nervous and everything because it was like one of my first sets mm. and um, this dude walks in with like fucking half bottle of wine and he like stumbles in he's like he was off his face it was funny like he wasn't a bad bloke or anything but halfway through my set he comes up to the f- like front of the stage he's like oi bro play your best shit man play your best shit and I was like oh okay I'll try I'll try my best and then for the whole rest of the set every time I finish a song play us your best shit bro I was like oh man it just, it just he, got awkward eh? as he's like, just like was, the only guy in the crowd yeah just literally the one right person. up the front like it was funny at the start but then by the end i was like man i'm trying to play my best <laughs> i'm trying bro. <laughs> he just he'd had a big day Hundy. big week on the uh on the tools he'd, Hundy, he'd, he'd, he'd come in for oh, sure that's good i right, hold for i just want to get one thing a little cross mark there's no there's no fresh off the vine plug here but jimmy throughout the coronavirus lockdown period people have found different things that they've become uh passionate about Obviously, your music, <laughs> other, pe- other people and different things. Something that I've become fairly passionate about, uh, drinking. <laughs> Red no, wine, same. especially. So, <laughs> as a present to yourself and for you coming and playing for us today, we are going to crack open a bottle of uh, Pinot Noir. 
Beautiful, and mate. We're gonna Beautiful. See what you think. We're going to see if you can get some of the notes coming yeah, through. Yeah, you got to teach me how to... Um, this is a... Uh, Eagles Rise. 2017 Pinot Noir. It's a Geelong Pinot Noir. Now, I don't know a whole lot about Geelong Pinot Noirs. I know it tastes nice. Um, and it's uh, something that... Not not the Geelongs per se, but red wine in general I've become passionate about. And you can actually... I can I get the notes that go through now. Go to the Bay City, <laughs> pulling out the goods. <laughs> Sorry, let's, uh, let's crack it open. You have to teach me how to actually drink and red wine, bro. Every like, everyone's gonna get this. I don't think you don't think you're getting a special treatment. Beautiful. <laughs> which one's mine? Take whichever. <laughs> okay, so, so how do we do it? An under shelter first. You give it a little swish. Or oh. oh. <laughs> give it a give it a good on. swish. Like that. Look at the technique from David. Yeah, check get Look the fingers, that. get the fingers on top of the glass there and just and just swish and it just around. Fuck man. I never thought this would be this hard. Like, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, it's I just it's, don't it's a work in it. progress. Don't worry, you'll get it. Oh, there and we then, go. There we go. And you stick your nose in there. What kind of flavors are you getting? <laughs> any fla- any flavors in particular? It's very fruity. Fruity. Is it fruity? Yeah. <laughs> Pinot Noirs are going to be a bit lighter in color. Look for those. Uh, look for the wild raspberry, strawberry notes that come throughout. Yeah, it's definitely like a, a berry sort All of right, thing. Cheers. Isn't it? Cheers, mate. Let's give it a taste. See what you think. Either or, yeah. it's you can spit it out if you like. If you're a real kind of knob That's about how it, long your day was. yeah, <laughs> I like it. I it's thought nice. it was gonna be like way more like oh, in your that's face. That's nice when it's like have one more sip. Well, that's nice, Peter. Well, I thought I'd crack it out because that's something that I've become passionate about: <coughs> music, wine, um, and I love to see what. Do you drink wine a lot? Um, I used to drink goon sacks all the time, but <laughs> 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 not really, man. It's not my choice to drink. But yeah, no, I'll, I'll have it. You know, but, uh, I it's, drink. But I think that's even more interesting. People who don't drink it when they when they have a sip, see what's up. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Well, Jimmy, man, thank you so much for coming on Under Shelter Sessions and being with us here. It was an honour having you on board. I think you're fucking killing it in the Melbourne music scene. And I think you got a big career ahead, man. Cheers, bro. Thanks, no to, thanks to everyone. No thank worries. You. Thanks very Cheers much, for guys. Me. Have a good one.